Hello students, welcome back to the next session of the chapter life processes. So in our last session we have discussed about one of the life part of the life process that is nutrition. So in nutrition process what is happening is we are uh, taking in the energy in the form of food and the food has been digested in our digestive system. So what is the next step after that process, after nutrition process is to uh, use up that food items to pro produce energy and for the growth and other maintenance work of our body, right? So, uh, it's mainly to produce energy. So, food item which has been digested has to be uh, broken down to produce energy. So, that is happening by the process called as respiration. So, in uh, today's class, we are going to discuss about the respiration process. So, what is happening in respiration is whatever food has been digested after the digestion process has been absorbed by the blood vessels around the intestine, I said you, right? So intestine is having uh, villi which is surrounded by blood capillaries. Through that blood capillaries, the nutrition will be absorbed into the bloodstream and from there it has been carried to every parts of our body, every cells of our body. In that cells what is happening is that food has been broken down to produce energy. So the process of producing energy by breaking down the food is called as respiration process. So what is respiration? It is the process of releasing energy by breaking down the food that is called as respiration process. So respiration happens by using up oxygen in different plants as well as in animals but the way how they take in the respiratory gases varies in plants and animals. So all of them all of the organ all the living organisms is having respiratory organs. So respiratory organs is a um, part of the body through which they are taking in the respiratory gases. Which are the respiratory gases? They are mainly oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oxygen has been used up and carbon dioxide has been released out. So that is uh, being taken in by the help of respiratory organs. So you can find a different kind of respiratory organ in different organism. So some of them have written here. So what is in plants? In plants the respiratory organ is tomato. So they use a tiny pores which is present on the surface of the leaf called as stomata. So stomata you can find mostly in the leaves. Not only in the leaves you can find even in the other green part of the plants, other part of the plants also. So stomata is a respiratory organ of plants through which they are exchanging the respiratory gases. So in case of earthworms they use their skin. So through the skin the exchange of gases happens. In case of insects, insects have minute uh, hole like structure, holes in the body. So that is called spiracles. Through spiracles they will exchange the gases. From the spiracles it will be going into the uh, tracheal tube. They have the tracheary tubes through which it will be entering into the tracheal tube and from there into the lungs. Fishes have a special organ called as gills. So gills helps to breathe in. You know fishes where they live? They live in water. So they are getting the oxygen from where? They are getting it from the dissolved form from the water. They have to take in the oxygen from the water which is dissolved in the water. So gills is a structure which will help in absorbing the oxygen which is in the dissolved form. So gills helps to take in oxygen which is dissolved in the water. So fishes have a special organ called as gills to take in oxygen. Whereas the land animals, we get oxygen from the atmosphere, right? So we need to take the free atmospheric oxygen from the atmosphere. So we have another organ called as lungs. So lungs can take free atmospheric oxygen whereas gills can take the dissolved oxygen. Whereas gills cannot absorb the free atmospheric oxygen or the lungs cannot take the dissolved oxygen. That's the reason why the terrestrial organism cannot live inside the water because they cannot the, uh, take the oxygen from the water. They can take the oxygen only which is available freely. Whereas gills, fishes cannot live outside the water because Gills can take the oxygen which is dissolved in the water but cannot take the oxygen which is in the atmosphere. Free atmospheric oxygen cannot be taken by gills. So fishes live in water by the help of gills. Land animals breathe outside by the help of lungs. What about unicellular organism? They don't have any kind of organs to take in oxygen, right? They don't have any respiratory organ, specialized organ to take in oxygen. All the things, all the life activities, I said you, it will be taken by the single cell. It is carrying out all the life activity. So even the respiration process is also carried out by the cell. So how it is happening? Just by a simple diffusion process. You know what is diffusion, right? It's a movement of 
uh, any molecules from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration. So they take in oxygen from the atmosphere by diffusion process. It will be entering into their body. Carbon dioxide will be diffusing out of the body. So that is how uh, unicellular organism respire by diffusion process by using their single cell. So these are some of the respiratory organs of different organism. How they exchange their uh, respiratory gases. For ex exchange of respiratory gases, they should have some features which will help in efficient exchange of gases. So what are the three features which is needed for all the respiratory organs for the efficient exchange of gases? This will be asked in the exam for three marks. So mention the three features of respiratory organs which will help in e efficient exchange of gases. So the first point to that is all the respiratory organs should have large surface area to absorb oxygen. So it should have a large area of absorption. In order to absorb more and more amount of oxygen, they should have a large surface area. That's the first feature. So all the respiratory organs should have a large surface area to absorb oxygen. So I will compare this with the human beings respiratory organs in the later session. Second point is, it should have thin wall. The respiratory organs should have thin wall. So if it is thin wall, what happens? It can easily exchange the gases. Uh, the movement of uh, respiratory gases happens very faster if the wall is very thin. So the respiratory organ should have thin wall. If it is thick wall, it will be difficult for the exchange of gases. So all the respiratory organs should have thin wall for easy diffusion of diffusion and exchange of gases. The third thing is the respiratory organ should be having rich supply of blood. So it will, should be surrounded by rich supply of blood or blood capillaries. So uh, why it should have a rich supply of blood is, you know, uh, after absorption, after taking the oxygen, it has to be carried to different parts of the body. So to carry to different parts of the body, diffusion is not enough. So in, in case of uh, organism like unicellular organism, just by diffusion process, the whole cell, the single cell, complete cell will be getting the oxygen. Whereas if you are taking the multicellular organism, our body design is very much complex. Oxygen has to reach each and every cell of our body. You know which is the tissue which will reach every cell of our body is a blood tissue, right? Blood can reach every cells of our body. So it is by the help of blood that oxygen from the respiratory organ it is carried to different parts, different cells of our body is being carried by blood. So every respiratory organ should be having rich supply of blood around it. So the oxygen which has been absorbed can reach to every parts of a blood, uh, uh, every parts of the body by the help of blood. So blood uh, helps in transporting that respiratory oxygen, respiratory gases. So here in our body, if you take the example of uh, human body, if the oxygen which has been inhaled by our nose reaches our lungs, from the lungs it has to reach every parts of our body. So how it is going to reach from lungs to every parts of our body? It is by the help of the transporting, that is blood, blood supply, right? By the help of blood, it is reaching every parts of our body. So what in the blood is help, actually helping in carrying that oxygen is a respiratory pigment. It contains a respiratory pigment. So why respiratory pigment is needed? Because I said you, since we have a complex body, just by diffusion process, oxygen from our lungs cannot reach to the every part. So if I uh, take an example from the lungs, it has to reach to our toes. So if it has to travel to such a long distance, it cannot happen just by diffusion process. Something is needed to carry that oxygen from our lungs to the toes, right? So that is done by the help of blood. So blood contains a pigment, I said, it is respiratory pigment. Respiratory pigment carry that blood, uh, carry that oxygen uh, till our, till every cells, to the every cells of our body. So what is the respiratory pigment which is actually helping in carrying that oxygen by the help of a blood is the hemoglobin pigment. It contains a respiratory pigment called as hemoglobin. So it is a hemoglobin which is present in our blood, which is actually present in one of the component of the blood called as RBC, you know the red blood cells that contain red blood cells and that red blood cell contain a pigment called as hemoglobin which will bind with this oxygen and that oxygen will be carried to 
all parts of the cell. So it is that manner, in that manner the oxygen has been reached to every cell of our body. Is it clear? So these are the three features required for all the respiratory organ in every organism. It is large surface area to absorb oxygen, thin wall for easy diffusion of uh, gases, respiratory gases and rich supply of blood for transporting that respiratory gases. So this will be asked in the exam for 3 marks. So now let us start with the respiration in animals. So let us take the example of unicellular organism. Let us start with unicellular organism. So here I have taken the example of amoeba. So let us see how amoeba can respire. As I said you, amoeba is a single cell organism. It doesn't have any other organ. It is just made up of single cell. So single cell has to carry out all the life activities, even the respiration process. So you have already learned about uh, nutrition in amoeba, how amoeba uh, grasps the food, how it will take in the food or how it will digest the food just by using the single cell. So same thing happens even with the respiration. It will be carried out by single cell here. So since it is not having a respiratory organ, so amoeba is going to respire by a process called as diffusion process. So what is diffusion? I have said you already. It's a process wherein the uh, molecules move from the region of higher concentration towards the region of lower concentration. So it moves from the region of higher concentration towards the region of lower concentration. So now the amoeba has taken the food. It has undergone digestion process. It has some food items been absorbed by its body. So that food item has to be broken down to produce energy. So to break down the food in the amoeba's body to produce energy, it need what? It requires oxygen. So amoeba is an organism which you can find living inside the water. So since, since it is living inside the water, it gets the oxygen from the water itself. So how it is taking the oxygen from the water? So now we know there is plenty of oxygen in the water. So oxygen is available in the water. So you can find that in the body of the amoeba, the amount of oxygen is less. Amount of oxygen is more in their surrounding. So you know diffusion happens there. What is diffusion? Movement of molecule from the region of higher concentration towards the region of lower concentration. So what you can find here? You can find more concentration of oxygen in its surrounding, that is in the water. So from that region, from the region of higher concentration, oxygen get into the body of amoeba. So by diffusion process. So from the region of higher concentration, oxygen is moving into an area that is inside the body of the uh, amoeba, that is into the cell of the amoeba where there is less concentration of oxygen. So it moves from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration. So now oxygen has entered into the body of amoeba. So this oxygen will be used up by the body of amoeba to break down the food and to produce energy. So now the food has been broken down with the help of oxygen to produce energy. So after production of energy there will be a byproduct called as carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is produced as byproduct. So what you can see here inside what is happening? Uh, breaking down of food is happening. The food has been completely broken down by the help of oxygen and the energy is being produced and along with that and byproduct called as carbon dioxide is produced. So now what happens? You can find more amount of carbon dioxide inside the body of amoeba because respiration process has happened. Breaking down the food has happened, the energy has been produced and carbon dioxide is also produced along with that energy with carbon dioxide. So now there is more amount of carbon dioxide inside the body of the amoeba and less amount of carbon dioxide outside the body of amoeba. So what happens? Again diffusion happens. Carbon dioxide from the body will be moving out by diffusion process. So you know diffusion is movement of molecule from higher concentration towards lower concentration. So you can find more amount of more concentration of carbon dioxide inside the body it is moving outside the body. From inside the body it is moving towards the water by diffusion process. So in that manner it is eliminating the waste. The carbon dioxide has been eliminated from the body of amoeba. So this is the process how the unicellular organism like amoeba is going to exchange the gases just by a simple process called as diffusion. That is the movement of molecule from the region of higher concentration towards the region of lower concentration. 
So now let us move on to the other organism, other animals, how respiration happens in other animals. So before that let us come to, uh, let us understand what is the actual concept of respiration. So I said you earlier during assimilation process what happens, the assimilation means it is the process wherein the digested food has been absorbed by our body, it has been used up by our body to produce energy and for the growth and repair of our body, right. So let us now learn how that energy has been produced by that assimilated food items. So how the energy has been produced? So you know the respiratory gas mainly it is oxygen and carbon dioxide. So wherein oxygen has been used up and carbon dioxide has been released out. So here what we need mainly is oxygen. So there are other respiration processes also wherein oxygen is not used and most of the respiration process oxygen has been used up. So I will be telling about that later. So now let us understand what is respiration. So respiration is the process of breaking down the food I said. So food has been broken down by using oxygen to produce energy and this energy is produced in the form of a molecule called as, called as ATP. So ATP means the full form of that is adenosine triphosphate. So along with this energy another byproduct called as carbon dioxide is produced. This is the meaning of respiration. So respiration is the process of breaking down the food or oxidizing the food by the help of oxygen to produce energy and a byproduct called as carbon dioxide. So this is a waste in our body. Carbon dioxide is of no use to our body, that is animal body. So this has to be expelled out and this has to be taken in. So this taking in of oxygen and re uh, releasing out of carbon dioxide is a part of respiration. It is not called as respiration. So you might have been mistaken that respiration means it is taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide. Taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide is a part of respiration. Actual respiration meaning is to break down the food to produce energy. So for that we need to take in oxygen. That is we are inhaling. We are inhaling that is taking in oxygen. And after respiration we are getting energy a byproduct called as carbon dioxide that has to be removed from our body. So we have to remove the carbon dioxide that is called as exhaling. So exhaling what we are exhaling out is carbon dioxide. So we are inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide and this actual inhaling and exchange, exhaling of the gases is called as breathing. So you always mistake breathing with respiration. Breathing is just a physical process of taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide and respiration is a chemical process where you can see a chemical reaction there that is oxidation process you can see. Oxygen has been added to food to break the food to produce energy and carbon dioxide is called as respiration process. So in most of the respiration process oxygen has been used up. So since oxygen has been used up it is called as aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration means the respiration in which oxygen is involved is called as aerobic respiration. But in some cases in some organism like um, the yeast cells or even in our muscle cells sometimes oxygen has been not used up. Respiration can happen without the oxygen in the absence of oxygen. So such kind of respiration where the respiration happens in the absence of oxygen is called as anaerobic respiration. It is called as anaerobic respiration. So in respiration we have two types. One is aerobic respiration which happens in the presence of oxygen. Anaerobic respiration which happens in the absence of oxygen. So let us discuss about the difference between aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration in our next session. So we will be ending up the class today. This will be the end of this session. In the next session we are going to discuss about the different types of respiration. Thank you.